Hey, y'all, welcome back. We're doing this again, okay? Listen, uh, again, Tula continues to be the real OG, triple OG. I don't know what value is doing out here in these streets, but I know for one thing, Tula is going to get the job done by any means necessary. If you guys are new here, my name is Ashley, and this is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And y'all know that I am here to put you on, and we are back to talk Dune Prophecy at season one, episode four, Twice Born, we find out once born of blood, born of spice. Okay. And it's Lila. At the end of the day, it's Lila because baby, the dead has arisen. Okay. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering is if this is truly Lila or if this is Dorotea. Because I mean, not for nothing, but the little cult being reactivated to me, it's not a coincidence. It's not a quinky dink. It's nothing of the sort. And my other question is, is Tula now just like Desmond? Has she been reborn? She saw it in my eyes. She saw that the sandworm, Saladid, or whatever his name is. I think she's been reborn too, y'all. Right, but we'll get into it because as this episode opens up, the alkalites are spazzing. They're having nightmares. And we see an Emmeline, Emmeline. And Emmeline was the one that was the true believer, right? Very, very similar to the Dorotea that we met in episode one. And, you know, she's a true believer. She's the one that told Lila, you know, anything for the sisterhood. Sisterhood above all. Put yourself on the blocks and do whatever it needs to be done to get the job done. All right. And so we see her and um, seemingly she's unalived herself in this dream that she's having. But we also see that all of these alkalites that are there are having these nightmares. They're all tossing and turning at the same time, except for one, our girl who was Lila's best friend. Y'all drop her name in the comments below because I don't remember it. Valya is up to no good and she is plotting, okay? Uh, Valya has been kicked out, you know, so she can't go back there. So now she and Theodosia have to come up with a plan of how they're going to get back in the good graces of the Imperium. And so she decides that she is going to go back to the Harkonnen clan, honey, and she is going to enlist her nephew to get in on her foolishness, right? And so the idea is that she already knows about the rebellion. She is going to use her nephew as a pawn to... Uh, request an inquest into uh, what happened with Pruitt Retrezzi's death um, and in the meantime protect you know the uh, the Emperor Carino from being unalived by the rebellion right because she's got all of the tea this is the great plan um, you know nephew is just collateral damage she don't give a damn and her uncle Evgeny aka Robert Baratheon is like she's using you this is going to be up to no good around the neighborhood. And she talks them into it because at the end of the day, the Harkonnens want their name back. They want, they are, I don't want to say social climbers, but they want some position, right? And she doesn't even really like to claim that she's a part of this family. At the end of the day, she doesn't like them. She doesn't need them. Nezzy has a crisis of conscience this episode. Now, y'all know I don't really care for Nezzy as a character that much. She seems miserable, looks miserable all of the time. Um, but in this episode, I was like, okay, girl, have, have a little have a little something to say. Because she actually kind of foils, uh, well, assists in the foiling of uh, Valia's plan. Because she actually, when she finds out that her daddy is chumming it up with Desmond, who unalived this young child, she says, I want no parts of this. I'm not going to do anything this. And when it comes to the high council meeting, she actually requests an inquest. Well, baby, why she do that? Because it gave Desmond a platform and a stage. We saw earlier in the episode that Carino talks to Desmond and Desmond is basically like trying to convince him to use me. Use me as your weapon. Use me as your weapon. And Carino's like, no, you know, I'm not ready for that right now. We don't have to do that. And he's like, yeah, you do. You can't play with these people. You can't play with these people. You can't play with these people. And Desmond is burning Kasha's damn uh, order. The, the, the order of the sisterhood the pages okay um and finally carino relents desmond gets the floor at the high council and he starts incinerating everybody because of course he lets them know that there's a rebellion kieran hot tails it out of there because how will they know how did they know but everybody was going to be unalived and he quashes it and he burns some people up in the meantime valya is so through she has lost the courage of her convictions and so in a desperate moment we see her having a conversation with griffin and i'm like how are we talking to griffin because griffin is long dead when griffin is about to disintegrate and go back into the, his other form 
we hear her say, thank you, Theo. We find out that Theodosia is a damn shapeshifter. I'm glad to know that the only power isn't the damn talking to the waters and grab your blade. I, that was getting old and played out for me. So I'm glad that's not the case. Um, yeah, but Theo's a shapeshifter. I'm curious about how we're going to use that. And have we used that before already? I'm very, very curious about that. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, because of the nightmares, because of the dreams, Tula decides that she's going to do a guided meditation, honey, or something of the sort, and get all of the alkalites who had these dreams into the room to draw, to go back into their dream, to figure out what happened. Shai Hadud didn't took over everybody because all we see are the eyes in the machine. And that's Shai Hadud. That's the sandworm. That's the sandworm. She, by the end of the episode, is sitting by Lila's little, you know, casement that she's in, her little box, her little mausoleum um, while she's on life support and is begging her to come forth. Then who enters? Emmeline. Emmeline enters. I know the secrets. You killed Dorothea. You killed Ori. And now I'm going to tell the whole Imperium your business. Tula goes up behind her like an assassin, like a ninja, like a, I, I, I don't know, but she got her from the back slice that neck she didn't talk to the mini waters she used her two hands and she went through all of these flashes of everything that she had done all of that and we see the great sandworm she's being engulfed by it we see sand coming through the crevices the next thing we know lila's done busted out of her box we don't know where lila is lila comes back with blue eyes honey and is hugging uh tula and i'm thinking is this lila or is this dorothea Tula, you've been born in the sand now. I feel like you damn near Desmond. You didn't gave that thing a sacrifice. You didn't gave that devil a sacrifice. And now I think you're going to be doing its bidding too from the inside. You or Lila. I don't know, guys. It's going to get interesting. We only have two more episodes. I am super excited to see what's next. You guys drop it in the comments, though. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought of these, these most recent two episodes. Um, I did post the episode um, three before this, so go be sure to check that out. I will link that in the description. But, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of the things for your girl, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.